everybody. I'm Allison Alhamid. I am your Editor-in-Chief of Modern Salon, and we are so excited that you're joining us um, on today's Hangout. Uh, we've brought a long list of educators to you throughout the week across all of our content on ModernSalon.com, on Facebook Lives every day at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific, um, across our newsletters, across every post on Instagram. And we thought, what a great way to continue the dialogue um, but let you guys have the opportunity to interact directly with these experts. Um, and we've hand selected these these artists, these experts uh, for different reasons. Um, I can't wait to introduce you to them. Um, it's Texture Week and we're so excited. So thank you guys so much for joining. Um, as you'll see that you can leave a comment um, within the chat box, I will be watching. So not only am I going to be talking to our experts, but I also want to be talking to you and get you the chance to talk to these guys. So please make sure that you're um, engaging, asking your questions, uh, because it's all about curl confidence this week. We want everybody to up their level of understanding about the texture market, up their level of understanding um, about how to care for curly hair and all of the considerations that you need to be thinking about so that you can properly service any and every client that sits in your chair because that also equals big bucks for you. So without further ado, I can't wait to introduce our panel of experts. Um, I'm going to kick things off with Michelle Breyer. Um, Michelle, you are just such a champion of texture, embracing texture. Um, you were the founder of uh, naturallycurly.com. Um, and you know we've been working together for a long time. So I thought how, how great to introduce you and have you talk a little bit about the texture movement and, and why it is that texture is on everybody's tongues right now. Well, um, excuse my voice. I lost my voice this morning, so I'm sorry. Um, anyway, for me, texture has been on my mind since I was born. I, I was, uh, excuse my voice. I lost my voice this morning, so I'm sorry. Uh, so basically, I I feel like it, half the, more than half the population has curly hair. And it's been something we've all been dealing with without a lot of help for a lot of years. And I feel like in the last 20 or so years, there's been such an amazing understanding and acceptance. Um, hair care brands, uh, stylists are they're understanding that women with texture want to embrace their texture they don't just want to straighten it so um, and I feel like that has created a momentum that has gone way beyond any kind of trend this is a lifestyle for people with curly hair absolutely we want yeah. to love our hair absolutely. And, yeah and Chadwick, I'm going to throw it to you now, too. I'm so excited to introduce you to everybody. You're a salon owner based in Florida. You do exclusively curly clientele. And That's great. transformed your business. And so, you know, you and I were talking about, you know, comfort level and, you know, getting that confidence. And, and tell us about how you've been able to carve out such a great name for yourself in this category. Yeah, Allison, I think... Um more appropriately, you have to understand that almost two decades ago, I moved here to uh, Fort Lauderdale, which is South Florida, which is humid year round. Sometimes it's less, now it's more. And so down here, everyone has curls. You know, people who move here, all of a sudden, curls come into place, which is a beautiful thing. Um, but moving down here, I found that, you know, there was a weed head salon, and uh, I just thought, what an amazing thing. Everybody coming in had curly hair, and everyone leaving left with curly hair. And so I got on a plane and flew to New York and she trained me herself. And I have to tell you in that moment, it forever changed my career. It changed everything for me to the fact that today I sit here, I own a weed at salon. I only cut curly hair. I am uh, one of the lead educators for this company. And it has just instilled with me these incredible techniques, this understanding <laughs> and being able to work with amazing people like Michelle who have helped pave the way. You know, in the past like five years, I've seen a huge surge of people now wanting to understand curl. And if there's any one thing that I can say, that's this. If you don't take the time now to try and understand curl or texture in the salon, you will fast and quickly become the dinosaur. I, I totally agree. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. So with us today, we have Janetta Walker, um, who is a master colorist with Alpha Parf, and you have such experience across the board in working with curly clientele. You and I were together last week in Chicago. You're from Chicago. You yes. you embrace all things texture. So 
Um, there's a lot of considerations though that you have to be prepared for. It's not a cookie cutter situation. You have to really be armed with knowledge. Um, so tell us about like what some of those considerations are. You know, we talk about when you're coloring curly hair, it's very different than when you're coloring, you know, non-curly hair. You might think that the hair is very thick and coarse, but it's actually much finer than that. Absolutely. Um, we need to definitely um, recognize curl type. Uh, how loose or tight a curl is, uh, definitely looking at, you know, the actual texture of that curl. Is it fine? Is it normal? Is it coarse? Because all of those things will be dealt with differently um, in a color situation. Um, understanding that uh, curly hair needs to retain moisture. It needs to have a proper protein balance in order to keep a springy curl. Um, and knowing the chemical makeup and the aggression of your products and chemicals that you're using and how they will affect those curls. Because most women who have curly hair, they want their curls to stay curly. They don't want them to be limp or dry or frizzy. So um, when you're doing chemical processes, all of those things make a difference in really determining how to formulate to keep those curls at its healthiest. And I'd like to jump in to say curly girls want a stylist who knows how to work with texture yep. and they will if if you're not doing it they will find somebody who is Absolutely. they will travel they will travel thousands of miles to go and, to a good texture expert and michelle to your point like people fly to see us here in the salon people drive on an average of three hours i have clients this afternoon she's driving three and a half hours to see me today it's huge it's reality huge. it's a thing that's the way of the world of curls. It is. And I never in a million years thought that I actually would. I left a whole clientele in Chicago, moved to Georgia. I have people flying from all over the place yeah. to come and see me. It is serious business. That's unbelievable. You know, I um, was talking to my sister this morning and her daughter. So my niece is six years old and has what would be labeled as unruly texture, but it's actually very ruly. Um, mm -hmm. It's just that Agreed. she hasn't quite learned how to do her daughter's hair yet. Um, and when I told her I was, you know, we were focusing on this all week long. She's like, I can't wait to watch. I wa Can I send you pictures? To I will send her <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. Help me. Um, and Janetta, you and I were talking about that last week. You know, you came from a family where your mom didn't know how to do your hair. And so Absolutely. you didn't know how to do your hair. So. Uh, Chadwick, I was hoping you could touch on, you know, you don't look the part, yet you're, you're an expert. So if you can do yeah. it, anyone can do it, right? Yeah, yeah so absolutely. It's funny, like... Get started. Yeah. It's funny, like on a weekly basis, you, you don't know how many times people say, you know how to do my hair? And I'm like, I get it, I get it. But the thing is that, uh, to Michelle's point, curly girls are educated, and they already know, they do their homework on me. They know more about me coming in than I could ever know about them. Um, they don't take a chance. They go to a curl expert. Um, but the thing that's amazing is this, and I think as we go through the next 30 minutes or whatever, what we're going to uncover and find is that once you're properly educated and you know and you understand those curls, you can speak to them in a whole language that they respond to, which means the client will know within 10 to 20 seconds if she can trust you or not. And, and she that's will, huge. She will be loyal. She yeah. will bring her friends to you. You will, yeah, yeah business will go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it will true. go. I think what we have to look at um, is this. In the world of social media today, an average client lasts about two years because they're just constantly engaged with other stuff. But with curlies, that's not the case. They're with you forever. You get a curly client, you got them. You can't die. <laughs> right. No, I know. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm not allowed to go on vacation. I'm not or, allowed to be sick. And, and it's like, no. you know, as an educator, you have to travel sometimes. And then I'm like, oh, we have to make the phone call. I've been called away. And these girls are like, no. <laughs> so you guys have hooked me. I'm sold. I believe in the category. I believe in specializing. I believe in confidence. Now let's talk about getting started. And so much about really crushing the service is in the consultation. And Janetta, you and I were talking a little bit about this. What are some questions to ask your client who has natural hair or might be transitioning to natural hair? What are some of those questions to make sure that you guys are aligned and that you're going to check those boxes for her? The first thing that I usually ask is what is your lifestyle and what is your commitment level to your curls? Um, you know, 
I have two different types of curlies. When we talk about natural hair, I have what's called a straight natural and I have a curly natural because it's very hard um, when you're using heat to really, really work on keeping the integrity of those curls because if you overheat them, then they go straight and yep. you can't get them to curl back up. And that's what we call heat damage. So there's a very fine line of tread. And so, you know, if I have someone that's curly, what is your lifestyle? Do you work out? Um, uh, you know, do you find yourself flat ironing your hair all the time? Are you trying to make it straight? What type of lifestyle do you want? You know, your curls to be a part of it's, it's super important to know how they, or what, or the commitment, the time commitment that they plan on, you know, products and, and all of those things. They want to their hair, for example, and if they're yeah. willing to invest in, in, you know, professional products and yep. they, how often are they willing to come back to see you? So, Trims. Absolutely. Yep. We have to oh, go ahead. I would say too, that's your time to let that, that woman or man know their hair is beautiful because so many times they've sat in somebody's chair yep. where they felt like they, it's something to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So that consultation will help that bond with that curly girl to feel like you, you see me as beautiful. You see my hair as beautiful. So that's very important. That is very it, important. That's a great point. It is. And to speak to both Michelle and Janetta's point, uh, one of the things that we do, the very first question is tell me about your hair. Tell me your story. Because what we're dealing with is we're coming from a place where people have been straightening and relaxing and are mm -hmm. moving away from that. Yep. So into the future, I think the conversation will change, but still what's relevant and current is this. Tell me about your story. And that gives them the opportunity. It's therapy for them because I can guarantee you they've all had two to three really bad haircuts. And in that consultation, that one question, they're going to give you all the information that you need. They're going to tell you how short they want their hair. They're going to tell you if they want their hair big and voluminous or if they want it lean and controlled. And it's a whole different mindset than when you're cutting straight hair. Absolutely. And, and to your point, when you're doing a consultation and when we talk about trust, you know, most curly uh, men and women, you know, they have a derogatory view or have had a derogatory view of their curly hair most of yes. their life. You know, it's unruly or, you know, yes. no one can ever get it this way or that way. So when you come in confidently during the consultation and say, hey, I got this, this hair, you know, this is this is something that I can work with. I want to let you know that it is beautiful. Um, you know, it it definitely changes the mindset and, and it lets it allows them to relax. It's almost like, oh, finally. Exactly. Right. And, you know, I think one of the things too is to, uh, to properly know and understand the common stylist who doesn't understand curls will say you need two inches cut off. Really, a half an inch is split. And one and a half is simply dehydrated. And yes. it's knowing and understanding that. And when you speak to the clients, you're going to speak to them more about like what their hair needs. Needs. And then how to meet those challenges. And oftentimes, that's before you even talk about cutting their hair. Right. Yep. So let's talk about cutting. Let's move over there. We have a question coming in um, from Sarah. She wants to know, what do you prefer? dry cutting or wet cutting and what are the pros and cons of each so chadwick i'm gonna i'm gonna throw that one to you so um i'm a weed and master artistic educator i'm a weed and stylist and we cut hair wet and i'm gonna explain why when hair is wet it is the one time that will always be consistent there is nothing consistent about any two curls their movement their change however every time you go to the shampoo bow it will always return to that exact same state. Because of that, we cut hair wet because we can have predictable outcomes. Oh, I love that. Anybody care to, to add on to that before I take the next one? I, for, for myself, I think it depends on the type of curl. There are some curls that are you know looser and are easier to curl wet. But when you get into the Afro kinky, um, you really, there's so many different ways that you could do it. You could blow it out. You don't have to flat iron it, but you could blow it out um, because you want to be able to get through it, be able to get even distribution when you're cutting. So it depends on the shape. Um, and I find that especially the tighter the curl, um, I usually go on the dry side. 
I, I have had wonderful wet cuts and wonderful dry cuts. I think the key is that that stylist is trained in texture. Absolutely, Michelle. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. I've seen beautiful haircuts that have been produced from dry hair as well as wet. Mm. Yep. Okay, Janetta. Yes. Um, a question about coloring curly hair. Yes. When you use bleach lightener to to color curly hair, what um what's the best thing to do both before and after that process? So before the process, I you know definitely want to make sure you know that the hair isn't already dry. It's not already parched. Um, we know that, you know, chemical processes, you know, they disturb the cuticle layer. So, you know, a lot of times that person who has curly hair may have a hard time retaining moisture. And we know that when hair is dry, it frizzes. So, you know, you want to prepare the hair in a way um, that it's ready to get the color process. So uh, you definitely need to evaluate the hair first, decide, is it dry? Does it need protein? You know, how, you know, how can I obtain the right moisture and protein balance before we go in with this process? And then after you've bleached it, or even before you bleach it, you need to know what you're bleaching with. Uh, there are bleaches that are more aggressive than others. Okay, and so you need to understand how they work and how they will break down the curl. Once you've determined that and you say, okay, this is what I'm going to use, um, I'm going to move on, we're going to, you know, bleach it. Then after you've done that, you need to maintain strength because your strength comes from your disulfide bonds, which is going to keep your hair curly. Okay. Um, I talk about this a lot. When you're overheating or overprocessing curly hair, it goes straight. And that means all those bonds have been broken down. And so you want to maintain the integrity of the curl um, by definitely following up with a protein and moisture regimen. Awesome. Okay, so I want to move over to some of the myths out there about textured hair. Um, Michelle, what would you say is one myth that you think exists out in the universe that you you wished you could just broadcast it from the rooftop that it's not true. Um, let's see that everybody with curly hair wants straight hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that true. would be that, and and also that it that it can we all I, okay. This is going to be controversial, but maybe not with this audience. Um, most of us need some kind of product in our hair. We're not gonna get out of bed and have our hair look, you know, the way we want it perfectly, uh, you know, the, whether it's tight curls or loose curls or, um, you know, a natural style, it's gonna take some work. So um, I think a lot of curly girls look at other curly girls and think, oh, your hair must be so easy. It does take work, but it, can become easier when you know techniques. Mm -hmm. Michelle, I agree with you. <laughs> uh, when you have people going, you know, transitioning from relaxed hair to naturally curly hair, and they automatically think, oh, this is gonna be so much easier and less maintenance, which most of the time it's more time and more maintenance. Yeah. You know, it's interesting my uh, to go back to my niece, she um even when she was one years old, she okay. had very curly hair to the point where she, you know, people would say, Oh, nice to meet you. Look at that hair. So even mm. from one, one year old, she knew that her hair is what made her different. Yeah. And she, when she sees my hair and I blow dry my hair straight, and then I use an iron to curl it because I do mm. have curly hair. She wants my hair. Mm -hmm. um, and when she sees princesses on her movies, they all have straight long hair that she will mm -hmm. never have. No amount of styling is going to get her that hair. Mm -hmm. So, so much about what the parent of my niece is, my sister, is about that conversation. She knows her hair is what makes her daughter different and make that's the talking point. But it's about that education about girls are beautiful. And Absolutely. Girls, yeah. And so. So talk about that. Let, let, I would love to hear, you know, Chadwick from you. Tell me a transformation story when you spun your client around in her in your chair and she just came alive. And so I, I, yeah, I, it does. But uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to speak to reality, and it's going to tie everything that we've just spoken about in the past five minutes. Um, in my salon, we're departmentalized, and with my colorist, I've instilled in them to know, understand, compromisation of curls. 
when curls become compromised. And that's using improper color techniques, techniques that are just too harsh. So let's back it up. Four years ago, I had a client coming to me for the first time. She was relaxing, coloring, and highlighting her hair. Oh. And what would happen is we would style her hair and it would look nice. But by 48 hours, it was just blown back into frizz, undefined curls. I took her on a journey that lasted about a year and a half. And after about um, 15 months, and we walked her through everything, she could style her hair on Monday and it still would be beautiful by Friday. Because we restored hydration, moisture content, we stopped compromising her curls. And she then began to truly love her hair. She even cried in the salon one day. She was like, I never thought I was pretty enough to wear my curls. Mm. And that's one of the best things about my career is not just doing what I do from a creative standpoint, but truly teaching, touching, helping, and empowering people to believe and love that they naturally are beautiful. And when, when we go back, we were talking to uh, about the texture. I think that just speaks volumes because now more than ever, we're seeing texture that didn't exist for the past two to three decades because it was relaxed. It was straightened. People were told, well, you're not pretty enough. And yeah. that's one of the myths. Texture is absolutely it. mesmerizing and beautiful to look at. When you think about doing straight hair, when you're cutting straight hair, you're cutting volume, texture, movement into it. Curly hair possesses it from the beginning. As a creative person, when you work with curls, you're halfway there already. You've got the tools to bring your haircut alive. They exist within the interior of that haircut. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, Michelle, I wanted to ask you, we had a question coming about how do you start to brand yourself um, as a curl expert and transform your business? I feel like you've seen the best of the best when it comes to pros in the market and you've also seen the worst of the worst. So I'd love to hear from you your advice on, you know, if you were going to do one thing today after you've got the education, after you've got like, what do you do to help build that clientele and rebrand yourself? Well, there's, a, there's two things. I would make sure you're on a stylus finder for, for one of the, the, curl, the, the curl training programs that people know about because people will look for you if you've had training from a WeDod or one of the other companies that offers training. And then I would make sure that you're on social media and you're sharing photos of your transformations. I mean, that is a great way to tell the world what you're doing on an everyday basis. You're not telling them you're a curl expert, you're showing them. Right. So, um, you know, show, you know, you get out there and market yourself on social media. It's a great way. We've seen people build their businesses like from, from a handful of clients to six month waiting list. Mm -hmm. I want to show my Instagram profile. This is the Instagram bio, right? And so right here where it says Allison Alhamid Modern Salon, that's SEO friendly. When someone types in Modern Salon, my name's gonna pop up. Do you guys remember the record breaking egg or like the world breaking egg? It was an egg that got the most likes on Instagram. We saw all these people out there put like record breaking egg in their Instagram bio because people were looking it up and then showing up on search, search results. So we just can't stress the importance enough of adding in texture, curly, words that people are searching for. When you're posting content yes. on Instagram, yeah. to use hashtags within that, that category so people know how to find you. And don't just use words that a professional would use. Really think about what, what someone like my sister might be searching for. Look mm -hmm. at you know, curly styles for girls or things like that and use hashtags that are going to be user friendly, right? And, and Absolutely. the term curl expert goes an incredibly long way. Um, when you say you're a curl expert, that has power. So, mm -hmm. but make sure you have the training behind it. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yes. So I want to ask you guys this too. So what are some tips, Lindsay Lane is asking, what are some tips looking for guests who will be going from wearing their hair blown out or flat iron to wearing their natural curl to avoid frizz? I'm sorry, to avoid the frizz? Yeah, right. Frizz. Yeah, you know, right before we went live, I was talking to you about my frizz, too. So, Chad, yeah. I'd love to toss that one to you. Yeah, I think frizz is a very easy thing once you understand it, and that's this. It begins in the shower. 
bathtub? It absolutely begins in the shower with your shampooing, your conditioning. Your conditioning. And then I recommend, and I repeatedly recommend, and I ask my girls, apply your products in the shower before you even get out. Because once they're in place, they're there, especially with our climate control line, that it's guaranteed not to frizz. So you just wanna have the moisture, the hydration intact, and then you wanna apply the styling products evenly from scalp to ends, but it has to be in soaking wet hair. And then once they're there and they're evenly distributed, you're guaranteed to not frizz. Janetta, what are some of your favorite products? Some of my, uh, they're going to be water-based cream products, um, products that, you know, as Chadwood has said, when you're in the shower, your hair is soaking wet, things that are going to go in and have some hold, but they're going to seal in the hydration from the water. A lot of people have misconceptions about oils and things of that nature that are moisturizing the hair. They're not. The only way you're going to get hydration is from water. And then you want to seal in the hydration. So any cream-based product that has a very, very high water content, those are my go-to for people that have curly hair because they have to stay hydrated. And again, as Chad would say, that is how you stop frizz. It is, and Janetta, also too, to speak off of that, it's a daily thing. You have yep. to daily restore that hydration and yep. moisture that escapes and gets lost. Now, it may be a small amount, but in two to three days, that small amount becomes a bigger amount, then it turns into a greater amount. Absolutely. So daily maintenance is key for caring for your curls. And can I add that frizz isn't always a bad thing? Never. Like if it, if it you know, lots of times I want my hair to be big and yes. undefined, yes. and that that is beautiful in its own way. Yep. So um, if it's frizzy because it's dry and there's the product hasn't been applied properly, that's one thing. But I think, uh, you know, frizz has its own beautiful halo, fluffy, oh, beautiful mm -hmm. look. And Michelle, you're getting me excited because you're talking about the F word, but in the world of future <laughs> curls and girls, it's all about expansion. And those yeah. expanded, lived in, soft, open curls have a tendency to not be perfectly defined. And the modern girl, she's fine with it. She loves it. Yes, I exactly. always say the wash and go looks best on the third day. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. It's not so defined, it just gets bigger and fluffy. And that's when it's it sexy, it, Yes, it's regal. I love it. And that's reality. That's the real curly girl. Yep. And there's nothing better than One of we're the today. Things across today's conversation is so much about not just educating yourself, but really educating your client and what she's going to do after she leaves your chair is really going to make or break how satisfied she was with being your client. Um, I want to talk about sleeping and how she can preserve the, the definition of her curl when she's sleeping. Janetta, can you talk to us about what some of your favorite tips are for your clients? Yes. So um, depending on the length of hair, um, if the hair is on the longer side, I recommend, I recommend what's called a pineapple where you yes. can gather all your hair up at the top and then you can secure it with something that's slippery and satiny. You never want to use any cotton or anything like that um, or just sleeping on a satin pillow pillowcase. Mm -hmm. um, I also recommend a bonnet if your hair can fit under a bonnet um, to protect your hair again from your pillowcases. I personally sleep on a satin pillowcase because I don't like sleeping with things on my hair, but it's all about protecting your curls at night. Um, especially like there are some curly women or men that have super fine hair that if they get too much friction, it'll mat up. So yeah. you, you always want to protect your hair at night. And that's especially true of curly kids. Yep. And if you don't want to deal with um, mats in your child's hair, yeah. satin, satin pillowcase and a pineapple. I, yeah. Actually, and yeah, can I add a point to that too so that just people understand appropriately? It's so important to educate the clients who sit in the salon and you're working on. Um, you want to help them understand that cotton, for example, is how we make socks. We wear socks to absorb moisture on our feet. Yeah. Cotton pillowcases absorb moisture from the skin as well as the hair, which decreases the styling time. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, we also, you know, to bring up the topic of detangling, that's a big topic. Mm, that's so, huge. Huge. Um, so let's talk about that. How, how, that can be a scary thing too, is, is even broaching the subject. It is very scary. 
Um, especially so, for kids. Yeah. 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 Especially. And I think that um, as a curl expert, as a, somebody who only does curl, it's part of my responsibility to help educate and help clients understand uh, the whole process of it. So first and foremost, how you sleep with your hair up at night, that helps. How to properly shampoo the hair, going back and forth or like a pianoing technique, never in circles because t curly hair is tangly prone to begin with. So we don't want to do anything that would move us in that direction. Yeah. Um, but then just understanding things like for us, you know, in the salon, we're really eager to help people understand. And tangling is simple and easy. Tangling can be uh, sometimes as simple as just simply combing through. But sometimes, and actually more often, the knots are tighter and more interwoven. Mm -hmm. And the best way to deal with them is to go from either the left to the right and to take one hair out at a time because then you don't break and you don't damage the hair. It's yeah. a little bit of a process, but it's a guaranteed way to get through it and to not break or damage the hair. Yeah, a, a Starting with the hair detangle. Yep. Yep. And, and you know, we have products like the detangling heat spray. They're simple. They're easy. You just go in, you apply it, and the tangles have a tendency to just slip right out. However, sometimes again, when you have those nuts and you have those uh, almost dreaded locks, what you have to do is just simply one at a time. And I think even then. I like to do them before wedding because when it's wet, it expands and not becomes tighter. Mm -hmm. Michelle, there's some, you to add? Yeah, there's some great tools now too. Um, some of the, the detangling brushes and uh, a silk comb was a great find for us. I have a curly daughter and she used to get horrible mats, but we were able to like starting halfway through her hair, like so that we're not pulling on her roots, yep. um, able to like slowly get rid of those mats. Mm -hmm. And um, that made a big difference in her liking her hair. Yeah. yeah. And I think when, like Michelle said, like when you have tools like that and you're properly educated, then you're good to go. Like for mm -hmm. example, one of my things now is we're really, we're crazy about like just using like the wet brush at the shampoo bowl when the hair is filled with conditioner. Yep. It's a dream. It yep. makes everything easy. And you know, you have to really understand this. You have to understand this if you're going to work with curls. Yeah. Product is the most important thing. You can take away my shears. You can take away my blow dryer. Mm -hmm. You cannot take away my products because mm -hmm. I can do nothing with curly hair without the proper, without proper, proper prescription, right? So that's what I say about that. <laughs> I agree. I agree too. I, I third. <laughs> awesome. You guys, this is awesome. Um, I'm so excited. We have so many great questions coming in, um, but I feel like so many of them are customized to a specific client or to a specific challenge. So I definitely want to encourage everybody that's joining us um, today, and thank you guys so much for investing your time in this conversation, um, to stay in touch with these guys. Michelle Breyer, Janetta, Chadwick, each of you are bringing such a unique flavor to the conversation, and I like that you know, Michelle, you said this next one might be controversial. Yeah. And Patrick says, well, I don't worry about this, but I've got to worry about this. And Janetta is really focused over here. But everything that unites us is that it's about the education and continuing the, the dialogue. So um, Chadwick, how can people stay in touch with you if they if they want to continue learning? Um, do, they, do you have classes? What's the best way to Yeah, absolutely. You know, I can't say enough about the uh, empowerment that the WEDAD certification process instilled in me. I went to New York at the time and we'd had training and within 48 hours, I was able to come back and handle some crazy heads of hair that before that I had no idea what to do. So I encourage you to try to get into that. And, and if you can't get into the certification immediately, start with our, um, our, our beginning classes, learn the products, learn the rake and shake our styling techniques. Um, and it's easy to stay in touch with me. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Chadwick Pinley. You can follow my salon, Weed Ad, by Chadwick and Igor. And then there's also Weed Ad. And on the Weed Ad website, I have to tell you, um, and it's like your book, Michelle, it's filled with so much information, so much information that just sitting and reading uh, 10 minutes a day will help change your career, and you'll be able to effectively help people with curls and the challenges that they possess. Janetta, I know that you just... Um you just announced some additional education with the Alpha Park Milano brand, and you're really going to be bringing your expertise on an industry-wide level 
How can people learn more about um, those classes and how do they stay in touch with you? So um, they can stay in touch with me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at watch my hair bounce. And um, I, I'm sorry. I, oh, I love it. I love oh, it. Thank awesome. you. Watch my hair bounce. And so um, I have partnered with um, Alpha Power Milano to create a texture intensive. And we're going to be talking about all things texture. Um, I am mainly focusing, I mean, the class is for anyone, but I really want to focus on those who may not be, you know, new, but they will get, you know, someone in their chair that they're like, what am I supposed to do here? Um, I really, really, really want to help those who maybe want to know textured hair, but they don't know how to ask the right questions or, you know, know where to go. And so um, we've created this course, you know, to just get really, really down deep into the science of the curly hair, the textured hair. And then once we've evaluated that part of the hair, then how do we go on to color the hair? Because um, uh, like I said, a lot of people have preconceived notions about, you know, um, textures of hair and, and, and how to, you know, work with those textures, not understanding that just because somebody has really, really tightly coiled hair doesn't mean that it can't be super fine. One of the biggest things that we get is, oh, your hair is so soft. Well, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, baby fine, right? it's baby fine hair. So baby. I'm, I definitely want to, you know, get, you know, this class out and in, into the public so that we can, you know, service our stylists and so that they can have you know, and be comfortable with anybody that sits in their chair. Awesome. And Michelle, we're so lucky to have your perspective here uh, today, too. You, I feel like you are just so well versed in this um, topic um, from both the professional side and the consumer side. And you have such an interesting background. And we've talked about your book quite a bit, too. But why don't you tell everybody about it? Oh, shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> It's called The Curl Revolution, and it has um, the perspectives both of stylists as well as uh, lots of people's stories. We talked about how everybody sitting in your chair is going to have a story, their journey, their curl journey. And so we share lots of information about all the different types of styling techniques and cutting techniques. And it's a really good place to start to understand the curly girl too, and boy and kid. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and, and listening to you guys, I, I feel like you kind of hit on something, which is people who become texture experts are constantly learning and they're constantly uh, kind of learning new techniques and honing their skills and they become obsessed. And those are the best, the best stylists you want to go to because they, they, fall in love with texture. So, um, you know, the training, take training from as many people as you can, because you're going to learn something and you're going to get great tips from everybody. So uh, I would, yeah, yeah, I, I, I just want to jump in real quick because Michelle, I, your book, it did a lot for me so much to the point that, like I said, Oh, we got to have this person in the salon and we have to do a book launching. Her book is filled with so much helpful information. And this is not information that you would learn in a class. This is everyday information that's relative in the salon. I Thank you. That. I love that. And you guys give Michelle Breyer a quick Google too, and you'll see lots of great content. I learned quite a bit about curl cocktails and favorite <laughs> recipes for styling um, through some of her content. So I just can't thank you thank you three enough. Um, you're all bringing so much to the conversation. Um, and I want to encourage our viewers, which by the way, we've retained almost all of them throughout this conversation. So that's all right. Great. That's great. Um, if we didn't get to your question, please make sure to return to the comment section. So that chat box is going to disappear, but leave your question in the comment section. Not only can these guys that are joining us today respond directly to you, um, but it'll help spur interesting dialogue among among everybody. So um, I'm going to ask uh, Chadwick, Janetta, and Michelle to hang out for a little bit, and, but we just want to say goodbye to everybody and thank you so much. Um, we can't we, we we can't thank you enough for being a part of today's conversation. Be sure to tune into the rest of Modern Salons Texture Week. We have a contest going right now where you can upload your best curly work. So make sure to check out. Um, 
at Modern Salon's Instagram channel so you can get the details on entering because the prizes are fabulous. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. It's my thank pleasure. you. Absolutely. Thank you.